Okay, welcome. We continue with these predicate logic natural deduction fit style proofs. <clears throat> let's go proof number 37. Uh, let's do it right now. I don't think it's that hard. The thing that we are trying to prove is, maybe here's a good spot, um, for all x, uh, if uh, p of x and q of x, uh, that's, if that, that's true, if and only if, for all x, um, sorry, if and only if, the proposition is, if and only if, uh, for all x, p of x, and for all x, q of x. Okay, so what's, what's sort of happening uh, here? Um, here's what this is saying. I would like you to be convinced that this is true uh, before you try to prove it. Well, it just says, look, if every single person in the entire world has property p and q, then everyone has property p and everyone has property q. Conversely, if everyone has property P and everyone has property Q, then everyone sort of has the property that uh, both P and Q are true of them, something like that. Okay, so this kind of feels uh, very, very true. It is true. Let's prove it right now. Uh, maybe I, well, let me try to write small and if I have extra space, then great. Uh, okay, well, first of all, this is a biconditional. So, being a biconditional, um, that means that this is really just two proofs in one. And so, uh, let's set it up that way. Uh, my first um, assumption will be that everyone, that for all x, p of x and q of x, and I will conclude with uh, that uh, for all x, p of x, and for all x, q of x. Uh, and then I will start another subproof uh, with um, for all x, p of x, and for all x, q of x. And I will conclude down here uh, for all of that x, uh, p of x, and q of x. Okay, and I'm being kind of casual with my parentheses and brackets using sort of whichever one I feel like at any given moment. Uh, but this is the, the structure of the proof. So, so once again, the main connective being a biconditional, so we, we just use uh, what we know about biconditionals, this is what we need to do. And, okay, well, uh, I think it's now sort of clear how to attack this proof, because how do I prove um, that everyone has property P and everyone has property Q? Well, this is a, this is a um, conjunction, so I just really need to prove both of these. And uh, so here we go. I'm going to first prove that everyone has property P, then I'll prove that everyone has property Q, and I'll add them both together. Well, what does it take uh, to prove that everyone uh, has property P? Well, there's sort of one good way to do this, where you um, uh, pick an arbitrary variable, and so, okay, I've already forgotten my my uh, kind of catchphrase or whatever uh, that I've decided to, to stick to this year, but I think it's something like, you know, take, take arbitrary, uh, so, so, take uh, arbitrary object A. Alright, so um, the idea here is that I want to pick uh, from the domain sort of somebody uh, I don't know who. That's maybe the way you should be thinking about it. No, no. The thing about it is somebody, it doesn't matter who, I guess. Um, okay, so uh, this is this thing that I've called um, an arbitrary name. Alright, well, uh, if from sort of nothing uh, I can prove that, um, yeah, this is the whole thing. If sort of from, from nothing I can prove that A has a uh, property P, then I'm entitled to conclude that everyone has property P. Um, but of course it is true that A has property P because line one tells me that every single person has property P and property Q. And so now, uh, sort of filling this in from the inside out, I get to say in line two that actually, yeah, P of A and Q of A. Uh, and this is line three. I guess this proof is really kind of easy. So you're just, we're just getting comfortable with the notation here. Uh, what's the justification for, for this line two? Well, it's a universal elim on line one. 
if it's true for everybody uh, that's P and Q, well, then it's certainly true for A that P and Q. Uh, and now I just grab the only one of those I cared about at the moment. Um, so that's an elim2, and I've just shown that uh, A has property P. Well, if I chose an arbitrary object from my domain, and I showed that it has property P, well then, everyone has property P. And there we go, justification for this line 4, universal intro uh, proofs 2 to 3. I took an arbitrary object, I showed it had property P, so everyone has property P. All right, and now I just uh, now I just reverse the process uh, and say um, once again not reverse the process. Uh, I just kind of repeat the process. So I once again start a new uh, proof, kind of running out of space here a little bit. Um, so this is line five, kind of disastrously running out of space. Uh, all right, there we go. Uh, I start a proof in line. Um, uh, I start a, a, a new uh, proof where I take an arbitrary object A, and once again, I use uh, this line one to say that A has property P uh, and property Q. Where am I getting this line uh, five from? That is a universal elim of line one. Line one says it's true for all x that P of x and Q of x, so therefore it's, it's true for this. Uh, arbitrary name A, then I uh, extract from uh, number 5 the, the fact that I wanted. Um, so that's an and elim uh, 5, uh, which is to say that, that Q, that A has property Q. Well, if I took an arbitrary object and showed that it has property Q, I now conclude that everyone has property Q. So the justification for line 7 is that I did a universal intro um, lines 5 through 6. Okay, and now uh, I just and those two together, so the justification for line 8 is just 4, uh, 4 and 7. Okay, it's pretty straightforward, I think. So yeah, this is just, this is just practice. Uh, let's just keep going. Uh, now I am going to do the reverse. Uh, so how am I going to do this? Well, um, yeah, it doesn't really matter maybe, maybe what order you do this in, but uh, perhaps first I'll just uh, take apart uh, this line 9, because um, I will need to, to do that uh, at some point. Might as well do it now. Uh, line 9 tells me that uh, for all x, p of x, and for all x, q of x, so just uh, with, a, with a quick uh, add to elim, I uh, break that up into sort of two, uh, two pieces. Uh, now let me focus on the thing I'm trying to prove. Uh, well, the thing I'm trying to prove is that for all x, p of x and q of x. So, uh, how do I prove a universal? Well, there's just one good way to prove a universal. You uh, pick an arbitrary element A, and you show of that arbitrary element uh, that uh, p of A uh, and q of A. And I think it really helps to kind of go outside in here, because when you set it up like this, I think it's, it's clear that, the, that this um, conclusion is, is kind of warranted, right? If, if sort of from nothing I can prove uh, some statement about that arbitrary object, then I've shown it for all objects. Okay, now it's just a matter of getting this. Well, it's easily done. Uh, my spacing was a little bit off, I see now, because this is sort of the, the short half, uh, and I am just done. Uh, because from line 10, I can say that uh, A uh, has property P. From line 13, I can say that uh, A has property Q. So these are both just uh, universal elim 10 and universal elim 11. Uh, and this right here is an an intro uh, 12 and 13. And finally, uh, now I have a universal intro uh, 12 through 14. Uh, okay, good. Uh, final uh, step in line 16 is by conditional intro um, 1 through 8, 9 through 15. Okay, uh, I don't think I've done this problem in years. Uh, I usually never never go over this one because it's I think it's kind of easy. But uh, anyway, it's, it's practice. Uh, if this was the first one that you did 
uh, by yourself, then it's just kind of practice getting in the rhythm of, of getting comfortable with the notation. So, okay, there it is. Um, let's now switch to proof uh, 38. So, okay, let's go. Do, 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 do. Ah! Do, 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 do. Sure. Alright. Proof 38. We go. Uh, I hope the. It's a little bit dark in this room, but I think it's okay. Uh, what is proof 38? What does it say? What are we trying to prove? Well, so once again, uh, it, it's a, a, I'll, write, I'll just write the final statement down here. And the final statement is, um, there exists an x, p of x, and q of x, arrow, uh, and now brackets, there exists an x, p of x, and there exists an x, q of x. Cha, 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 cha. Okay, what does this even say? Let's kind of talk it out a little bit. Uh, all right, well, it's a conditional. It says, if there exists an object with both property P and property Q, okay, so there's something out there uh, which has property P and property Q, then I can say that there exists an object with property P and there exists an object with property Q. Well, naturally, whatever the object is that meets this requirement is also going to meet this requirement and this one. Uh, and this is a good example uh, of a conditional, so this, this conditional should be true, but the black conditional should be false, because um, I can't go uh, in the other direction. The, the converse of this statement is, in general, not true um, for, for sort of arbitrary properties P and Q, uh, because there could easily be an object with property P uh, maybe just one of them or something that doesn't have property Q and an object with property Q that doesn't have property P So then it wouldn't be true that there was an object with both properties So the, the converse of this sentence is false, but in this forward direction. I think it's, it's, it makes a lot of sense. Okay, well uh, The proof kind of does uh, or, or the the method kind of does a lot of the thinking for us because um, right away uh, I know what to do uh, and that is uh, because it's a conditional, I assume the antecedent and derive the consequent. So, start with uh, p of x and q of x, and I end down here with um, there exists an x, p of x, and there exists an x, q of x. Okay, so, uh, let's go. How am I going to do it? Well, uh, okay. Um, line one is sort of calling out for some, some exploration. Line one is telling you, dude, there is somebody out there that has this property P and this property Q, and, and that's the only thing I know right now, so I have to use that somehow. Well, how can I use that fact? How can I extract information out of this fact? There is only one way. The way to extract information from line one is to do an existential elimination. And an existential elimination is just a way of uh, uh, sort of exploring the consequences of line one by giving the person uh, in line one a name. Okay, so we're going to do that now, uh, and yeah, like I was sort of saying in the, in the previous video, um, there is a sort of uh, superficially similar notation, but yet, and, and yet the, the, the logic and motivation behind it is totally different. Um, what I'm what I'm really doing right now is oh man I, I just need to kind of memorize this catchphrase I think it's something like uh, the catchphrase was something like uh, uh, what, what did I what did I say I don't know why I, I I'm having so much trouble remembering this um, but it was something like oh man uh, this is a great video uh, Assign to X the temporary name A. Yeah, that's that's pretty intuitive, right? Assign, uh, assign to X the temporary uh, name A. Okay, and I'm calling this uh, this thing A a temporary name. It is my temporary name for uh, the thing that I know must exist because that's what line one tells me. Line one asserts the existence of some object that meets some properties, let's temporarily uh, name that object A, so that I may reason uh, from this. And um, 
basically, uh, if I can prove something uh, that, that, that doesn't depend on A, that doesn't reference A in particular, then, then, that, then that conclusion must just come from line one. Okay, but now I think what we need to do is, is just so obvious, because what does line two uh, tell us? Well, it tells us that A has property P. It also tells us that uh, A has property uh, Q. So this is just uh, and elim uh, two, and this is another and elim two. Uh, and uh, what, what now? Uh, well, uh, we should uh, focus on what it is we're trying to prove. We're trying to prove that um, someone has property B and someone has property Q. Well, here I found my someone. It's A. Um, and so, uh, going right, right for it, uh, I assert that there exists an X such that P of X. What's my justification for this? Uh, it's existential intro uh, line three. Certainly, if A has property P, I, I may conclude the weaker statement that somebody has property P. And uh, then I just uh, do it again. Uh, someone has property Q. Uh, reason, uh, existential intro, uh, line four. Uh, and, well, now I just add them together. Uh, and say, uh, there exists an X P of X, and there exists an X um, Q of X. Reason and intro, uh, five and six, uh, and the key sort of uh, thing to realize now is that we are done. And uh, why are we done? Because this now uh, statement, which I've proved in line seven, is sufficiently sort of general uh, uh, that it no longer references A in any kind of way. And once you've, uh, once you've um, arrived at some sort of general conclusion that doesn't specifically have any A's in it, then that general conclusion must simply follow. And, okay, I'll, I'll kind of repeat this same explanation from the, from the video because I think this is, this is the way of understanding it. This entire subproof was just, putting a big box around this, this entire subproof was the exploration of line one. Line one told me that there existed some uh, person uh, with, with property P and Q. And what I really just did was, I just, I just kind of said, the even looser uh, version of this purple is, is that I kind of just said, uh, call it A. You know, that's, that's, that's kind of how you would do this uh, informally, say, in a math proof, uh, where you weren't being uh, careful about your logic. Uh, if you knew that there existed some X, then you would just say, okay, well, let's just, let's just agree to call that X A for the moment. That's all that's going on here. And by merely naming that X A, I concluded something. And therefore, that conclusion simply follows. Uh, and so, I, I now uh, draw a kind of arrow back out to the main body of the proof, and I, uh, I assert, oh, it's uh, down here, I guess, uh, I just assert uh, line 8. I claim that line 8 just follows from line 1. Uh, and my justification for why line 8 follows from line 1 is the subproof that I just did. And so, uh, really, my justification here is I did an existential elim. Now, don't be confused by, well, okay, existential elim, uh, 1, uh, 2 through 7. I had an existential statement in line 1, yeah, that's it. I had an existential statement in line 1, I explored it uh, via this subproof here in the red box, uh, I therefore sort of extracted information from line 1, which is to say I eliminated that existential. Uh, and this is the conclusion I came to, so that conclusion simply follows. All right, and there we go. This proof is just done. Uh, justification, arrow, intro, uh, one through eight. Boom. Uh, okay, good. Uh, we're going to do two more uh, right now. Let's go. Um, yeah, nothing more to say about this. I mean, it's hard until you get it, and then it's so easy, it's unbelievable. So, I don't know, that's kind of how I feel about these now. So, you just need to chase that feeling for yourself. All right, uh, 39. Um, whoo! Uh, this one's just like even more uh, easy, uh, I guess. Um, what are we trying to do? Down here, the thing that we want to prove is, for all x, if, uh, yeah, 
I guess I'll use uh, I'll use brackets. If for all x, uh, p of x implies q of x, then cha cha cha. Um, for all x, p of x implies for all of x, q of x. Cha cha cha. Okay, let's uh, once again uh, talk this out. Uh, and if you're sort of well, okay, let's talk this out. What is it saying? Uh, this is sort of just sort of uh, is 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 kind of explaining the the sort of governing relationship or something between um, uh, between uh, implication uh, and um, and uh, universal quantifiers. So it, here's what it says: it says if it's true that for all x, p of x implies q of x. In other words, if it's true that for everybody. Whenever p, q, something like that, right? If, if whenever anyone has property p, they also have property q, or you might even say, if every p is a q, then if everybody's a p, everybody's a q. Ta-da! If for every single person being a p implies being a q, then if everyone is a p, everyone is a q. And uh, once again, you'll note that I'm asking you only to prove the the conditional in this direction, uh, that's because the biconditional is false. The converse of this statement is false. Um, if it's true that, yeah, but that's maybe a little bit uh, subtle that it's false. Uh, why is it false? Let's see. Uh, okay, okay. So maybe maybe P is like, uh, P is like being perfect and uh, Q is like, uh, you know, everybody's happy or something like that, right? So, uh, sure, if every single person in the entire world acts perfectly, uh, then every single person in the entire world will, will be happy. That could be true, right? Okay, but your chance of every single person in the entire world uh, acting perfectly is, is quite small. Uh, and uh, even though that might be true, it could be false that, uh, and probably is false, uh, that for each person, if they act perfectly, they will be happy. Because a particular person uh, might act perfectly, but uh, if, not, uh, if not everyone is doing it, uh, if there are bad uh, people, then, uh, then, then that person will not be happy. So, so no one person has the power to, to achieve happiness by acting perfectly. But if everyone acted perfectly, then everyone uh, would be happy. So, okay, uh, this is kind of the kind of um, sort of mental engagement, I think, with the quantifiers that, that, that's, that's needed uh, to, to get a feel for what's going on. Uh, or you could just kind of uh, mindlessly crank it out. Uh, it's really up to you, but when it gets hard, it's nice to, to be able to, to think about what it all means. Uh, okay, let's go. Uh, it's a conditional, so therefore I know always uh, what to do. In line one, I shall assume that for all x, uh, p of x implies q of x. And then all I have to do down here is uh, prove that uh, for all x, uh, p of x implies for all x, q of x. Okay. Uh, so, now what? Uh, well, once again, before even thinking at all, uh, I can kind of just uh, go with the flow here and see that I'm trying to prove a conditional. And so if I'm trying to prove a conditional, you know, there's, there's kind of one uh, good thing to do, which is to uh, do conditional proof. So now suppose everyone has property P, and uh, try to show uh, that everyone has property Q. And if I can do that, then this proof is just done. So it's really just writing itself. Uh, and it still continues to write itself because there's really one good thing to do when you're in the face with uh, a statement like this. If everyone has, I want to prove that everyone has property Q. Well, okay, the one uh, good way to do this is to uh, take an arbitrary uh, element from the domain and uh, from nothing, so to speak, uh, prove that, that A has property Q. If I can prove that A has property Q based on nothing at all, then everyone must have property Q, then, I, then, then I'm just done. Okay, why is this true? Uh, well, I have now these two sort of very powerful statements in lines one and two. Uh, and, and what does line one enable me to conclude? Uh, now that I have uh, considered this arbitrary object A, well, if for everyone P of X implies Q of X, then that's certainly true of A, so I get P of A implies Q of A, justification, universal E lamb uh, one, uh, justification, uh, and now I, now I want to say P of A, reason, uh, universal elim 2, now I have line 5, uh, reason, uh, modus ponens, arrow elimination, 
uh, three, four, uh, and now I'm just really done, right? Line six is uh, a universal intro. That's what happened after all. Uh, just above line three, I, took, I, I chose an arbitrary uh, object, and uh, it only took me a couple lines. I proved that, um, that that arbitrary object had property Q. So everybody does. Boom. Uh, arrow intro um, two through six. Uh, and finally, uh, arrow, mm -hmm. arrow intro uh, one through seven. Okay, so uh, these were all sort of three uh, quite easy, but anyway, I'm making the videos, so you can just not watch or watch on like three times speed or something crazy like that. Uh, okay, the number after 39 is 40, and there's a f number 40 in this packet. And, um, okay, a certain kind of person is going to not listen to me, but um, my rec my strong recommendation right now is, like, not to do number 40. I'm a very lazy man, and, uh, you know, I made an answer key once upon a time, and it's so beautiful, and, and, and I don't want to, like, redo my packet and read number things. But if I were to do that, I would probably put number 40 all the way at the end, uh, or take it off entirely. Uh, so don't do number 40 right now. Uh, I'm not going to assign it for a while. And uh, basically do it uh, much, much later. It should be like the last problem that you do, uh, number 40, uh, because um, it's very confusing and very weird. Uh, so, so more on that later, but please, please, please don't do number 40 right now. Instead, skip ahead to 41, which I did not assign, but I probably should have because, uh, well, I'm just going to do it right now. Uh, it's not hard or difficult, but it is uh, a little bit intricate because it involves two variables, so this is getting kind of exciting. Uh, and, yeah, let's go. Uh, so, what are we doing? Uh, it ha there's a single statement that we're trying to prove down here. Here's what it says. It says, yeah, this is actually... Maybe I should just do this one in class. Well, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, there exists a Y such that for all X, I guess I could do it now, sort of, and in class or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, because there's some very sort of important uh, issues here uh, to discuss. Um, boom, 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 boom. Okay, so, all right. And, and, and uh, you know, probably in other years, it's 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 been the case that I um, probably like didn't really teach this too much because I, I, I thought it was kind of maybe obvious or understood or something like that, but there is this uh, thing uh, called quantifier scope. Quantifier uh, scope. Um, and uh, basically a quantifier has a scope over all the sort of uh, things, you know, to the right of it. Uh, so there is a big difference um, if you if you let sort of L X Y be you know loves, I mean this is a conversation I used to have with, with the ninth graders when I taught pre calc A uh, even when I was when I was uh, teaching quantifiers. So uh, maybe it's common sense, but but maybe it isn't. Um, well, if uh, there's a difference between saying uh, that uh, for all X there exists a Y uh, such that uh, L X Y. Uh, it means means kind of one thing, but uh, saying that there exists a y for all x, uh, l x y means something else. So here we have a statement which which looks these statements look superficially similar. The 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 same variable is attached to the same quantifier, but I changed the order. And this is part of the um, kind of expressive power of the quantifiers. And uh, when uh, finally sort of very late in the game. Um, formal uh, quantified statement such as this uh, with variables uh, were introduced um, into the, the sort of language of, of mathematics and science. They had incredible uh, use and power because sort of for the first time you could disambiguate uh, in, a, in a kind of precise way um, these two different kinds of meanings. And so, okay, well, let's talk these out and make sure that everyone understands that they really are different things which mean different, and, and they mean different things. What does this say? This says, for all x, there exists a y such that x loves y. Okay, this could sort of get translated as everyone loves someone. Uh, and in fact, uh, everyone uh, loves someone. This is a sentence that people will, will say, uh, everyone loves someone. And it's pretty clear what that sentence means, uh, I think. Um, but, uh, okay, um, 
Well, what does it mean? What it means is that for every single person in the entire world, there exists someone that they love. Okay, well, here, the fact that the, 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 the existential quantifier appears after the universal quantifier means that the person that we are asserting exists, uh, the, the, the loved person, uh, so to speak, um, the, the object of the love, uh, is going to depend on the particular person that we chose. In other words, this is saying, pick any person. Then, after you've picked that person, I can go find someone that they love. Uh, for example, this is true uh, if sort of every single person loves their mother, for example, and their mother is, you know, they have just one mother and the mother is alive and all that kind of stuff, uh, and everyone loves their mother, then this would, then this would be true. Uh, everyone loves someone. For each X, there is a person, hey, like your mother, that you love. Okay, but this is saying something totally different. This might also get translated as everyone loves someone, um, but uh, really, uh, we would have to, and, and English is kind of this pathetic language which doesn't allow for you to, to move the, the, the words and the sentence around uh, kind of freely. We have a fixed um, subject, verb, object, uh, word order in English. Uh, we, can't, we can't do like Latin where we have all kinds of um, endings and we just put everything where we want it. So here, I might also just say everyone loves someone, but probably people would resort to some kind of awkward construction like there is someone uh, that everybody loves. Um, and, the, and this is getting kind of uh, interesting, maybe, uh, but off topic. Uh, but linguistically, the fact that you have chosen, uh, some might say, to, to, to use this longer and more awkward construction when the simpler uh, and shorter, more efficient construction was available is an indication that you are intending a meaning that is sort of different from, from, from the meaning here, or else why would you make this weird long sentence anyway? Uh, and, and so therefore, what, what does this weird long sentence kind of mean? Perhaps it means what I'm trying to, what's being said precisely in this, in this second sentence, that there exists a single person in the domain. I can name, sort of a, at the front, uh, an object and uh, based on that particular person, I can say that everybody loves them. Okay, so this is like, imagine that there is some sort of person who is universally loved, you know, the most popular person in the entire world, you know, like Obama or something like that, okay? Obviously, I know this is not true, but there exists a person, you know, maybe, maybe Michelle Obama, people like her more, I don't, I don't know if that's true. Um, there exists a person, Michelle Obama, uh, and every single person in the entire world loves uh, Michelle Obama. Okay. So this is called quantifier scope. It's 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 uh, very important. Okay, I apologize if you completely understood this already. Then then this was an unnecessary explanation. Uh, but uh, this probably should be in my in my intro lecture on, on quantifier logic. Uh, to be honest. Okay. Uh, nevertheless, let me erase this because because it's sort of coming up now in this first. Uh, in, in this proof, this proof number 41, this is the last thing we'll do, that we'll stop this video. Uh, what is this saying now, in light of this conversation, what is this conditional saying? It's saying, well, if there exists a Y such that uh, every uh, single, uh, uh, if for that, such that, for every single person in the entire world, uh, if P of X, then Q of X, uh, then, uh, then, uh, for every single person in the entire world, there exists someone such that if p of x then q of x. Okay, we need to give these uh, kind of things uh, some meaning so that we can so we can talk about this. Um, perhaps p. Um, oh man. Uh, perhaps p is uh, uh, plays the piano. Okay, and and uh, plays uh, piano and um, and q is is like you know get gets quiet or something like that. Okay, so then this uh, antecedent. What this antecedent says is. There exists a particular person such that for every single other person in the entire world, uh, if you play the piano, that person gets quiet. Okay, so there's some person out there in the world, perhaps just one person, who is sort of very sensitive to piano playing or something like that. And uh, if anyone in the for all anyone in the entire world who plays the piano, then that that person uh, Y will will get quiet. Okay. Uh, well, that's kind of nice. Uh, what does this, however, then say? This says something different. This says that for every single person in the entire world, there is a special person uh, that if you play piano, they will get quiet. 
So, uh, so, so now uh, the why that exists, the why that, that gets that gets quiet when when uh, uh, when he, he hears the piano being played uh, is specific to the particular person. So, so perhaps um, you know everyone's kind of you know brother or something like that. I know that doesn't work, but uh, for every single person, you know, their brother will get quiet when you play the piano to them. Versus here, there's a there's a universal person uh, who who gets quiet uh, when anyone plays the piano. All right, and so once again, I think this uh, can be seen uh, to be uh, true, but the converse is false. Uh, because here, uh, the particular person that gets quiet when they, when they hear piano being played uh, might depend on, on, the, on the individual person who's doing the playing. Whereas here, that person um, is, is, can be independently uh, specified in advance. I should say that for my particular, for, okay, logic class, hello, uh, I don't know who's watching this on the internet, but for my class, people in my class, You've already kind of been through this whole thing with you know epsilon delta proofs and stuff like that, so so you're very com comfortable with these with these ideas. Uh, let's just shut up and do the proof. Uh, it's a conditional, so uh, I know exactly what to do. I say there exists a y such that uh, for all x, uh, p of x implies q of y. Cha cha. Okay, and down here I need the the, the consequent. So for all x, there exists a y, p of x, arrow, q of y, boom, boom. Okay, now what? Well, uh, keeping our eyes focused, uh, I think, on, uh, well, okay. Um, shoo, 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 I guess it doesn't really matter which order you do this in. Let me put this down. Um, I, I, maybe, or, or maybe it does, yeah, I, think, I guess it does matter. Um, so, so here, what should we sort of do first now? This is, this is getting kind of complicated because multiple quantifiers um, uh, are complicated. Uh, so here's what I need to prove. Let's, let's stay focused on the thing that I'm trying to prove. What am I trying to prove? Uh, that for everybody, blah, 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 blah. All right, well, then there's a, um, one sort of straightforward way to do that. If I need to prove that something that's true of all possible people, then I pick an arbitrary person uh, from my domain and I show that it's true about that arbitrary person. Uh, and so down here, what I want to show is that there exists a y such that uh, p of a uh, implies q of y. So uh, if I start with nothing and show that there is a person that if a plays the piano, uh, they get quiet, well then it must be true that for everybody, uh, there is a person that uh, if they play if, if, if they play the piano um, why it gets quiet okay uh, yeah okay oh what next well now it seems I should reach for for number one because number one is saying there's this person there's this person out there uh, and uh, they have some special property so let's now name that person from line one uh, and if we if we name that person in line one, what I now want to do is I need to pick a different variable, so let's call it b, and what I'll say is the, the sort of defining property of this person b is that, um, that if anyone plays the piano, b gets quiet. Okay, so what, what have I done here? I, uh, I, I said, oh my god, well, what's the stupid, uh, what's the stupid catchphrase again? It's, um, yeah, assign to, assign to y, uh, the temporary name, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, assign, uh, to y, the temporary name a. I'm trying to teach this, like, well this year. Oh, except it's b, okay? So what I'm agreeing to do right now is this, this person y that I know exists in mine one, uh, I've decided to temporarily uh, name uh, that person B and to see to see what I can get out of that. Uh, all right. Well, uh, now uh, what? Um, well, uh, now I just stick A in for X in line two. So if if it's true for everybody that if they play the piano B gets quiet, well then it's certainly true that if A plays the piano uh, B gets quiet. Uh, and uh, well, that's it, right? Because now. Uh, if when A plays the piano, B gets quiet, I now, keeping my eye on the thing I'm trying to prove here, um, would like to sort of abstract away from B and just, just say that there exists a Y such that if A plays the piano, then B gets quiet. And, 
uh, okay, what are these justifications? This is universal elim. Uh, this is universal elim uh, two. Uh, this is an existential intro uh, line three. And notice that I am now sort of done, right? Because my line four is sufficiently. Uh, sorry, that should be a Y there. Uh, because my line four now, uh, I've now abstracted away from, from any mention of B. And so my line four is a, is a general statement uh, that doesn't reference B specifically. And so what's really happened here, uh, once again, hopefully you find this kind of thing helpful, is uh, this whole thing in red was an exploration of line one. And so, uh, what does line one say? It says there exists some person Y. I have agreed to temporarily name that person B. I proved something not about that doesn't mention B. So therefore, um, just via that, uh, just via assigning that temporary name, I've sort of concluded something that, that really came from line one. And so line five is a consequence of line one. Uh, and what did we do to get line five? I eliminated, so this is an existential elimination, an infinite sort of proof by cases uh, of, uh, of, of line one. And I did it uh, via lines uh, two through four. I extracted information by, uh, from line one by temporarily naming the person in line one B. Okay, uh, but now uh, I got exactly what I wanted. Starting with an arbitrary object A, I proved a sentence. So now that sentence must hold for every possible object. So universal intro uh, uh, two through five. Uh, so above line two, in fact, sort of up there, I, uh, I picked an arbitrary object. I proved something about uh, that arbitrary object A. So that, uh, that, uh, that must hold now of every object. And so this proof is done. Uh, the only thing uh, worth maybe mentioning now is did I have to do it this way, uh, or could I have, um, yeah, I think I really did have to do it uh, this uh, way. I'm just looking at this for a second. No, I guess not. I guess um, one, one thing that might be on your mind now, not, not to confuse people, uh, I should get a different color, but I'm kind of running out of colors, is, you could have, instead of this entire, yeah, and if I had uh, infinite board space, that would be great, because I don't want to erase everything that's here. But uh, instead of this entire approach that I took, um, instead of this entire approach that I took, one could, I hope, uh, I think it's true, what, I, what one could instead uh, do something else, uh, which is to do the proofs kind of in the other order. So uh, trying to sort of without confuse pe confusing people lets me uh, do it right here. Uh, that is to say I could have just jumped right into line one uh, or I could have just begun exploring line one. So what I'm writing right now is, is kind of a substitute uh, for, for what's in the green, uh, significantly brighter in this room now. Uh, okay, so instead of doing what I did in the green, I could have instead said, uh, and I'm still going to use B for here because I like to go in alphabetical order, so I, I always want my uh, kind of object of my sentence to be B or something like that. Uh, so I could have said, let B uh, be, this would have been an alternate um, line two now, uh, the, the statement uh, for all x, uh, P of x implies Q of y, and then I could have gone about uh, proving my, my universal. So I then could have said, I think, I think this is true, yeah, this is just going to work. Uh, and now what? Uh, by uh, taking this over today, I get uh, now that, uh, in fact, uh, P, I should say B, uh, P of A implies Q of B. Uh, and then I say, well, that means that there exists a Y such that uh, P of A implies Q of Y. Uh, and then, um, what, what, what's kind of next? Uh, well, uh, since I took an arbitrary A and, and, and concluded something, well, now then that conclusion uh, 
just holds for all x. And so I get for all x, there exists a y, uh, p of a implies q of, of y. But then, uh, I'm entitled to just take that whole thing uh, kind, of, kind of out again. Uh, and so uh, now, um, let's see, okay, at the risk of, of making this confusing, this is sort of another way you could have done this proof where from line one you went straight to an exploration uh, of the person in line one by naming them B, um, but having now, um, having now concluded with something that doesn't depend on B, uh, now you can just kind of pull that back out into the, into the main body of the proof, and so you would then kind of unindent and you would, you would get right back there at line six. So there were two uh, sort of different uh, approaches. Uh, I can't say which one is, is more intuitive. Uh, this second thing I did over here in purple uh, sort of jumps right into to using line one first and then kind of remembers, oh, the thing I'm trying to prove is a universal and then sort of goes about proving it. Whereas the approach I took uh, is to say, if the overall goal is to prove a universal, let me sort of start that proof. And then in the middle, oh, I need to name that person in line one. So in this case, the, the order doesn't matter. Both of those are valid. Okay, woo! That was proof 41. Goodbye!